to Eye on Horror, the official podcast of iHorror.com. This is episode 43, otherwise known as season three, episode seven. And I am your host, James J. Edwards. And with me yet again is your other host, Jacob Davidson. How are you doing, Jacob? Uh, doing good. Just existing. <laughs> Quarantining. Yep. <laughs> and uh, also with us is your other other host, John Korea. How you doing, John? Excellent. Just avoiding existential crises left and right in this one bedroom apartment by playing copious amounts of Far Cry 5, which I have to say, Far Cry 5 is basically like a first person shooter that takes place in every single doc, uh, Netflix docuseries just mashed into one. <laughs> like there's Tiger Kings running around. You're fighting a giant doomsday cult. It's a uh, it's a fun and you can go fly fishing. Did you go to Waco? Uh, no, no. This is more like in the Montana. Like, what, <laughs> okay. They, they, I don't know if they explicitly say what state, but it seems more like the northern mountains. So it seems like more of like a wild, wild country setting. You know. Hey, speaking of wild, wild country setting, how come you never told me about Sax Squatch? Sax Squatch. Sax Squatch is in the Sax playing Sax Squatch. I stumbled across Sax Squatch, and I am addicted to his. He. It's basically a sax, Sasquatch who plays the saxophone, and he'll be ripping like Baker Street or Careless Whisper. Yeah. I'm waiting for the uh, for the Lost Boys song. I still believe if he if he busts <laughs> that, I'm, I'm, I think he I'm, did do that. <laughs> maybe I haven't gone that far down the rabbit hole with him. But seriously, listeners, it's been like three or four days of James just sending us sax squash <laughs> clips. Like, what else am I going to do in quarantine? What's been going on with you guys? You guys been watching a lot of good stuff or I mean, you've been playing video games. I've been watching sax squash. Jacob, what have you been watching? You've probably been watching movies. Uh, yeah, although <laughs> something I was going to bring up uh, was I I just uh, saw the season two premiere of uh, What We Do in the Shadows this week. Yes. So I was very happy about that. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Like, probably my favorite uh, horror-themed TV show, if not my favorite TV show in general right now. Oh, man, the, the show is just so clever and and funny and out there. I, and, I mean, the, and, well, the cast is just so amazing. Uh, so, yeah, the, like, the premiere had two episodes. I think the second one, the one about ghosts... Is probably my favorite one of my favorite episodes of the series so far. I'm with you. It, it was just so brilliant. There's like one point where they're like, "Wait, ghosts exist?" And they're like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Okay, but ghosts are the spirit of dead people." Yeah, and we're dead people. So does that mean we have ghosts? And they're asking these questions, and they're like, "Well, we don't know about Colin Robinson, <laughs> and Colin Robinson's an energy vampire." And they're just like, <laughs> "I love that guy." We don't know his deal, and like they kind of start continuing on, and then he just kind of cuts them off. He goes, "Yeah." I don't know, really know my deal either. So, you know, I just keep trucking. <laughs> and, it's just like, <laughs> and the running gag of that, or like the subplot of that episode is Colin trying to get somebody to do up dog. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I have to tell you, that has been an absolute annoyance to about five or six people who know me all week is me <laughs> since trying to get people to do the up dog and mm -hmm. then other dumb like jokes after they did that on the office one of my co-workers at the time would always be trying to get people to do up dog it's no oh boy so it's it that, that's been going on for years <laughs> my favorite is going hey can you give me that thing under there and then they go underwear and i just go <laughs> 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 It's so easy to do on a on a set, you know, because you just you're everyone's always asking for something, so just going like, "Hey, can you get me that under there, underwear?" And there's always something under there. John, are you an energy <laughs> vampire? Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> another thing I've been doing every week, um, like uh, you know, I worked at the American Cinema Tech, and one of our film series was uh, Cinematic Void. You know, it's like a screening series of like genre movies and horror and stuff so uh jim branscombe the guy that runs that uh started doing a weekly stream on friday nights of like movies with like weird commercials and stuff and uh this week he played this really bonkers sasquatch movie called night of the demon which is basically a bigfoot movie combined with a slasher movie because it's like Bigfoot going around fucking people up. Is that the one that you're really into that is like 
Bigfoot slasher and alien, or is that a different one? Uh, that might be. Oh, oh, you're you're thinking a demon warp. Yeah, no, I you're thinking a demon warp. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, this one uh was like apparently. Yeah, this one's from like 1980, and it's about these uh students or whatever like tra- tracking down these disappearances in the woods, and it. And been, apparently the story behind it was it was like kind of a more basic 70s ish uh bigfoot movie like uh boggy creek or something but then you know it was around 1980 slashers were really big so the producers added a bunch of scenes of the of bigfoot going around killing people in incredibly gory ways like he even pulls uh, a sleeping bag kill uh several years before jason like like bigfoot froze a dude in a, in a, in a sleeping bag into a tree and he gets impaled on a branch Okay, first of all, that's how you can sell me on anything. Well, I feel like was that done in prophecy too? Oh as, wait, as yeah, well? you're right. You're right. Sleep. There was a sleeping bag kill. Yeah, remember the the bear thing like that? That one person's trying to hop away in the sleeping bag, and the bear just swings and just fucking destroys them. The zipper is stuck. I feel like that was the TV commercial for Prophecy at the time. It was just that one scene, and the kid uh, with with the stuck zipper hopping away. <laughs> And the bear just, like, swings down and obliterates them. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm sorry. There is more than one movie with sleeping bag kills that I haven't seen? I suppose. Prophecy and Night of the Demon? All right. Yeah. Have you seen Prophecy, Korea? No. Oh, my God. It's it, Prophecy. Oh, Prophecy's in, and and it it has kind of an environmental message, which you know, I mean, those never go out of style. But it's a yeah, it's a pretty brutal monster movie. It's it's Frankenheimer. Yeah, it's a. Oh, it's nice. one of, it was one of those post Jaws animal attack movies, you know, like Orca. Oh, dude! I, oh, I'm so excited for that for Orca to come to the U.S. on Blue. <laughs> yeah, I I like purposely like held off on that on the Umbrella release for a while. I'm like, I don't want to pay the importing costs for. You know, Orca, but yeah, Scream Factory has delivered or or will deliver. Orca, Orca is more um is more Moby Dick than Jaws, though. Yeah, and funnily enough, I saw Prophecy, uh, Orca, and this other movie called Nightwing in a triple feature at the New Beverly a couple months back. Perfect. I the first movie I remember seeing in a theater was an Orca Grizzly double feature. Oh. And and I was probably six, so I mean I had a really cool mom. But I remember I had my um, I had my stuffed Shamu that I brought with me, and all the theater workers thought that was hilarious. That there's this <laughs> six year old kid bringing his orca to see orca. Aww, cool. yeah, that's adorable. <laughs> and that's what happened to me at such a young age to make me turn out like this. Hey, mine was similar. My my earliest movie memory is going to see Jurassic Park at the. Uh, drive in and I'm just sitting in the back with my dinosaurs and everyone's telling my parents oh this movie's too scary for him she's like what are you talking about he loves dinosaurs look at this kid what is that dinosaur and I probably said something stupid I don't know <laughs> I love dinosaurs but I was never that smart with them like I'd be like oh yeah that's the black billed platypus I don't fucking know <laughs> black billed platypus I'm telling you I was fucking close stupid. enough Close enough. <laughs> You're just making shit up and people yeah. don't even know. People who don't know dinosaurs are probably like, oh, this kid's brilliant. Oh, this kid's so smart. <laughs> this kid's so smart. Look at him. Speaking of releases, I actually managed to fu- uh, get something new on Blu-ray. Uh, underwater, finally, yes! on, on home video. Oh. Does it hold up? Is this like the fourth time you've seen it? Yes. And fifth. <laughs> yeah, fourth and fifth. You've already watched it twice. It just came out Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's awesome, James. Oh, and I love it. I need to come up with that. I would love to watch it. I've only seen it once. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, that's the thing. This was, like, probably my favorite movie so far this year. I saw it three times in theaters because it was a, you know, it was a cinematic experience. You know, just, uh, it, w- it was really cool going through all the special features because there's, like, a, like I think, like, an hour-long documentary making of thing and some other bits and pieces of trivia that kind of uh, expand on it. One interesting thing is, you know that stuffed rabbit that T.J. Miller's character has in the movie? Originally, or, or like, in su- in a different cut, it was a li- it was a living rabbit. Like, it was his pet rabbit, not a, not a stuffed rabbit. I guess that makes more sense on why he'd want to save it. That changes everything. <laughs> it really does. And, yeah, par- yeah it was for some kind of uh, Alice in Wonderland motif, you know? Uh, down down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was really cool 
uh, going through like the special effects features and you know talking about all the creature effects um because yeah it did go through a couple changes like with the monsters and um yeah and, you know it's, it, like that's the thing you know i could just go on and on it there, there is so much to explore yeah well I've been getting busy trying to plow through my have not watched pile of Blu-rays because <laughs> it's an entire shelf now. So uh, I've been been working on like working out and watching like my, you know, kind of cheesier titles while working out. You know, like uh, sometimes they come back in the dark half where those titles where it's like, all right, I can work out while watching this. I've There's seen nothing this before. cheesy about the dark half. The dark half's awesome. I, I, I don't know. I think it was because that was my first Stephen King book. Like, I, I'm just too critical of that movie. I will say it is one of the most faithful adaptations of a King book out there, but I'm still very critical of that movie. But I, I appreciate it. When I was a kid, I hated that movie, but I, I appreciate it a lot more now. But still, I can get my steps in while watching that. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But uh, there were two movies that I finally watched. Uh, first of all, finally watched Daniel Isn't Real. Yes. Oh, that's okay. A, love that one. Which I really dug. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, Patrick Sch- Schwarzenegger trying to go uh, Nick Cage on uh, on everyone throughout that. Like he was really like bringing in what was it Snake Eyes? Like he was <laughs> really emulating that type of performance. But it was it was interesting. I I don't think I loved it as much as you guys, but I still really liked it. It's uh, definitely worth checking out. It's on Shutter right now. But one that really blew me away, uh, also on Shudder, is Incident in a Ghost Land. Ah, have you guys yeah. seen this or yes. heard of it? James, you it, saw it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, Incident in a Ghost Land, it, it's, oh. first of all, I mean, we don't want to spoil anything, but it is not the movie you think it is. And it no. takes a left turn, and you're like, whoa, did not see that. Con- I, oh, it's yeah, it's so good. Well, first of all, it's from the director of the original Martyrs. And so oh, sure. you'll... You already know this guy is not afraid to be brutal, and this movie this movie does not reach Martyrs level. I've I've already been hyped. I ordered a uh, import of of Martyrs on Blu-ray so that my fiance and I can watch, and I've just been like leaving no details except, hey, you know how Incident in a Ghost Land was brutal, babe? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, wait to <laughs> Martyrs. Um, oh. But Incident isn't as brutal, but it's still it's still a very angry movie, very very angry. Um, but yeah, the less you know about it, the the better. Because I knew nothing going into it. She was just like, oh, it's a home invasion movie. I'm like, okay. Wah. Yeah, not really. <laughs> that movie fucked with my head quite a bit. Um, and that's it's it's only really available on Shudder. Like, I think there might be a DVD out here. It's a it's a hard one to track down. Even um uh like the official release in the UK, you know, I had to go directly to the Arrow website to to get it. Huh. So, you know, import costs. Oh, yeah. That's what happens when you're reaching free folks. You just import costs. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, highly recommended. That movie truly, like, the less said about it, the better. But it is it is not only really well done, but it really fucked with me a lot during it. So uh, that that is a highly recommend on mine, I feel like, horror. Speaking of, of uh, really fucks with you, um, I finally got around i had been hearing about it for a couple of years i finally got around to tag not not the the comedy from a couple of years ago but oh, the, the japanese Sono. movie yes yeah have you guys have you, have you guys seen that i haven't seen it but i, oh my I know God. it not the one with hannibal burrs and all that no 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 the, i i audibly asked you know what the fuck is wrong with this movie like <laughs> probably a half dozen times while i was watching it, even if you don't want to watch the whole and it's it's relatively short it's like it's 90 minutes even if you don't watch the whole thing the first probably 10 minutes is a must see the bus it yes have you seen it have you seen the first 10 minutes at least yeah i've seen i've seen only i've only seen that scene online it's like a clip explain the premise though well well the, the explain the premise kind of spoils it but there's this girl this japanese schoolgirl who basically is having a really weird fucked up day and shit keeps happening to her and then it kind of resets and and everyone else is like you know you're you're not sure if it's a time loop or an alternate dimension or what's going on but it's uh like it, it gets real bloody and all of her friends die and then all of a sudden they're alive again you know and and she's trying to figure it out while you're trying to figure it out and it's it's a it's a really messed up movie and it's on um I feel like it's on like Tubi or something like that, but it's also on Amazon Prime. It's also uh, probably. It, I, I don't know if it's on Shutter or not, but it's it, it's it's easy to find. It's pretty easy to find. I started watching it on 
one of those like like Tubi or Vidmark or one of those ones, and then the the uh, the ads came on, and I said, I'm like, wait a minute. This is on Prime. Why am I watching ads? <laughs> so I went, and I got it. I, I brought it up on Prime and fast forwarded to where I was. And I didn't get the deal. I'm like, hey, I pay for Prime so I don't have to watch ads. <laughs> um, all right, James, I I gave in and I watched Cats. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, see, it, the listeners can't see that he's rubbing his forehead. <laughs> uh, boy. Listen, listen, I've been I've. I've been a good boy this year and I've cut back on my drinking and I've promised myself that I was not going to get <laughs> oh boy. blackout drunk this year. And I, cats almost did that to me and it wasn't a, a self-control thing. That movie just, what the fuck dude? Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I thought people were being over dramatic with reviews for that movie. And I was like, I was one of the people being like, Hey, calm down. We get it. You have a dictionary. you you have an encyclopedia. Cool. You can No, they were all kind of right. Um, gee, like <laughs> I, I, I is starting to think that Tom Hooper peaked so hard, so early with King's speech that like he, he kind of, is past the narcissistic director and is just now a sadomasochist and (laughs) cats is just like his, his like masterpiece of torture. Like (laughs) it's his sallow, (laughs) his 120 days of Sodom. (laughs) Yeah, dude, I had to listen because of that movie. I had to cleanse myself after by, uh, you know, back to back Roadhouse and Streets of Fire viewings. Yeah. I lost all faith in humanity and was very hammered. So those are my go to. I'm drunk. I need to watch something. You know, Roadhouse, Streets of Fire, Roadhouse. But, but God damn, that was like nightmare inducing. Some of those scenes. Like, okay, don't get me wrong. Never requested it, but if someone goes, "Hey, there's a this in this movie, Nick, you get to see Idris Elda naked," I'd watch it. I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know what the movie is, but I heard naked Idris Elda is naked in it." That movie makes me regret that thought so hard. He's not anatomically correct naked. <laughs> he's a cat. No, he's cat. And then <laughs> T Swift is is trying to sing in a sexy British voice. No, I'm done. I'm done. That's <laughs> this is about horror. I don't know why I'm brought up cats, but because it's horrific. <laughs> It is those little cockroaches, and then like I'm uh, telling you though, mark my words, in an, in four or five years, Cats is going to be a midnight movie. It's going to be it's going to be just as big as The Room or Rocky Horror. People are going to be paying good money to. I don't know if they're going to get to the point where they're wearing costumes. Oh well, I went. I, I passed by w- one of those Alamo rowdy screenings, and people were in costume. Yes, it's all coming true sooner than I thought. I hope that starts happening somewhere around me. Oh. Well, I mean, they were doing them like <laughs> e- almost every day at the Los Angeles Alamo location. So yes, yeah, no, it's it, it definitely had had momentum. <laughs> And I still bet not one of those fuckers can tell me what Jellicle means. Ah, like, you're not supposed to know. Only cats know. And they're not talking. Fuck off with that explanation. <laughs> 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 fuck right off. <laughs> 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 right, what, what, else have, uh, what else have we seen? Judy Dench was delightful, though. Skimble Shanks, the tap dancing cat, stole the movie, though. He was incredible. The railway cat, the tap dancer. Okay. Anyway, we're 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 getting off. Jacob, what else you see? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, also a bit more of a somber note. Uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, Nobuhiko Obayashi, the uh, Japanese director of the uh, '70s haunted house, art house, horror comedy uh, House, aka Hausu. Hausu. Yeah. Hausu. Yeah. <laughs> Sad, yet sadly he passed away last week so of course uh rewatched house and just goddamn that movie holds up this is one of the most insane haunted house movies it's i've ever seen so weird i mean how that's what makes it great but but okay okay korea i know you like house how how su how wh- like? wh- wh- <laughs> <laughs> obsessed. i know you love okay I'm obsessed. obsessed okay so why do you love that and hate cats they're kind of oh. cut from the same cloth. No, they're not. Yeah, they House are. Doesn't, House doesn't force Rebel <laughs> Wilson's cat crotch in my face for 10 minutes. Um, 
<laughs> and House features way better cat dancing scenes. Yes. All right. Ghost cats. It, there's only two, but they're way better than all the dead scenes in Cats. I'll give you that. House is not uh, nearly as horny of a movie as Cats. No. <laughs> Very true. And there's nudity For- in House. Yeah, and it's there's less actual horny. nudity. <laughs> and school and uh, Japanese schoolgirls, like um for me, it it's just uh house it's a crazy movie. There is so many like he basically took every trick in the book and a few that aren't in the book that you can do with special effects in camera and he does them. And there's it's just this really weird world that kind of takes it might take a viewing or two to get into or really and you don't always have to understand it when you watch it but it's just he does such a good job of uh, establishing this over the top and this wacky world that it just get you get so sucked into it and so when stuff i you know people always say when stuff hits the fan with it that film fucking was hitting it from the get-go with just introducing people it's just like ah, you know constantly yelling at you but like you never feel preached at with any of what was going on not to mention it's just a fun and silly movie that knows when to like hit you with different notes when you aren't expecting it okay real quick what's your favorite gag from house i'm gonna go first the piano that eats the girl is oh uh, you beat me to it 100 percent my favorite okay well that, that's why i said it first because i thought one of you guys might have that one float floating ghost head bites girl on butt <laughs> oh that's a yes. good one too i also like uh what's it the dude who gets turned who gets killed by being turned into bananas one of my favorite things about house is like all of a sudden in the middle there's like this musical number just like out of nowhere that's like oh hey let's have let's have a music video basically (laughs) oh yeah Um, he's just throwing stuff at the wall and it's all sticking that's the best i mean it, it doesn't yeah the movie's so weird that anything he does doesn't seem weird i think on the criterion release they say that it's like a scooby-doo episode directed by dario argento <laughs> and yeah. that's how i always described it to people but then i would always add on acid like oh, if yeah. dario argento was on acid and directed scooby-doo and even that is probably like 50% of how crazy and creative that movie is. But the acid is the important part because that whole yeah. movie, I would hate to watch that movie actually on acid because you that would be the worst trip. Not going to implicate myself in anything. <laughs> You've done it, haven't but you? I, I, I can imagine <laughs> it being a really fun time. And I can also imagine staring at the artwork of the cat in orange and black is uh is very interesting and would possibly meow at you at times <laughs> not that i would know personally what that is if, if if anyone has ever experienced that but i i could imagine that happening wink wink all right <laughs> Let's take it to a movie that's just as weird but not quite as wacky um i saw and it's it's on amazon prime for free now antrim have you guys heard about antrim uh no uh, Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. The the subtitle is The Deadliest Movie Ever Made. And supposedly what it is, is it's a cursed movie. Supposedly this movie is um, everyone who watches it dies. And what it is, there, it's about an hour and a half and there's like bookends. So the movie itself is probably an hour and 10 minutes. But there's... um, there's like a lead up to it where they talk about people who film festival programmers. It's supposedly a movie from 1979 and... It got sent to these film festivals and all the programmers who watched it would end up dying like they would have like seizures or one um, fell on a poisonous uh, stonefish and you know I mean like messed up stuff but then there's also like um, a theater that was showing it burned down with uh, with an audience inside and another theater that was showing it someone uh, laced the popcorn with acid and the whole audience went crazy and, and a pregnant woman got trampled like basically you know cursed movie stuff and then it says it, it, it puts up a disclaimer and says, okay, we're going to show you this movie. Everyone who has watched this movie has died. So if you don't, you know, if you want to back out, back out now. And then they put a 30 second timer on it and gives you a chance to turn it off. Wow. That is so dramatic. Oh, oh, it's milk and the gimmick. And <laughs> the, the movie itself is, I mean, it's okay. It's basically about a girl and her little brother who go into the woods 
and um, they want to find they're going to dig a hole to hell is what it is. And there's more to it than that. And it's a pretty creepy movie. Like there's a lot of like the forest they go into is like a suicide forest. And there's always stuff kind of on the outside of the frame that's just really creepy that they don't notice. Like some of it's obvious. Like at one point the camera, um, the camera kind of like pulls out and in the foreground there's like an old corpse that they don't notice and you're like oh that's weird but there's other ones where like they'll be walking and you'll just barely notice some feet hanging from a tree around them you're like oh this is really you know really creepy and then there's subliminal stuff all through the movie that they kind of explain at the end you know the 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 end bookend where they talk about you know antrum you know they talk about the sigils and sub the subliminal stuff that they put all through the movie but there's one point that really creeped me out and this you know isn't really a spoiler but you know it's it it took me by surprise but at one point about halfway through the movie they go they they show a couple of flashes of something that's going to happen later on in the movie and then they show this devil and he's just staring at you and i thought it was a picture like a still frame but then after about 20 seconds you see his eyes are moving and then his then he starts smiling and then it goes back to the movie and i'm like holy shit was that like did that really happen or is this devil in my tv possessing me oh my god it was it was really creepy and then they had of course experts in quotes on at the end of the movie to explain all the things that you just saw in Antrim and you know these are the summoning of these demons and blah blah blah. So anyway, if I die before this uh, podcast gets posted, I watched Antrim. <laughs> and that's yeah, why. Good to know. <laughs> Antrim is is a good segue to our topic because our topic is cursed films. And Cursed Films happens to be the name of a new series on Shudder that we've all watched. Yep. There are five yep. episodes, and we've all watched them, and with mixed opinions on on them, all of them are worth watching. I think for my... They're about in order. The Exorcist, The Omen, Poltergeist, The Crow, and Twilight Zone, the movie. Yeah. And um, I think, first of all, I loved the Omen one because it was hilarious. They had these um, black magicians and witches and, you know, supposed Satanists on to try to justify some of the stuff that's going on. And I thought it was hilarious. It was, it, it had me, I mean, and Korea didn't find it nearly as funny. I think he was more offended by it. Well, okay. So he, here's the thing. I think I view the cursed film series, like you said, it's a five part series. Each episode is titled after a movie and the f the last three episodes i thought were really well done they actually had like a thesis and like stuck to the topic really well the first two the exorcist and the omen they kind of lost focus for a good portion like i think the omen episode they only talked about the omen movie because there were other omen movies that they could talk about too that had weird shit going on on this set uh and they could br talk about you know Weird stuff like, oh, if you're dealing with a movie about Satan, the reason why it might be cursed is because a black witch is, uh, you know, cursing your thing and whatever. Okay, cool. I, I can accept that. But they only actually talked about, like, the weird stuff happening with the Omen for, like, five minutes. And then the rest of the movie or the rest of the episode is just, yeah, this one guy, he's like, oh, yeah, this is how you could curse it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out in the desert and we're going to curse a film right now. And it's like, okay, first of all, <laughs> you're a dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. If <laughs> I know people who actually practice and all that stuff, and I think that's cool. You, you believe in what you believe in. On 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 the skeptic specter, I'm I'm a, a bit of a skeptic. So let's say, as a skeptic, it's like, okay, first of all, you look ridiculous uh, <laughs> doing this. But I think they edited it to make him ridiculous because at one point he tries to blow out his candle all dramatically and it doesn't go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but also if if you're not a skeptic, a skeptic and you actually believe it, this dude's just going to curse a fucking film production? Just some random one. Just a random yeah. one for show? That's fucked up. Yeah. Like, either way, this that's a stupid fucking thing, and, you, and you're and you going to dedicate most of your episode to this jackhole? Uh, and that's my problem with the first two episodes, is they dedicate too much time to the jackholes. Uh, more offensive with it is the Exorcist episode, because with the Exorcist episode, they bring it up, but they don't fully explore it how... The Exorcist was a huge PR push of saying that this film is cursed. And I really wish that they really got into the tactics and what they and techniques of what they did with it. Instead, they interview a, quote, actual exorcist 
yeah. which yeah. I don't care if you believe <laughs> it or not. They show you parts of the exorcist too. He go he actually goes and performs an exorcist on a guy. No, no. Real life exorcists are fucking parasites and they prey on people just yep. to make money and it's disgusting. All I got out of the exorcist one, because I pretty much knew about all, I mean, there, a bunch of weird shit happened around the exorcist, like with people being beheaded and car accidents, you know, crap like that. And the serial killer who was on set. Th- yeah, they bring that up as well. But um, the thing, they didn't go into, like you said, they used all that stuff as marketing and they didn't really go into that. But um, right. All I got out of The Exorcist was kind of what a dick William Friedkin was to his cast. I mean, is there anybody in that movie who didn't get hurt? No, they did talk about, you know, like the, he fired a gun on set. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. All yeah. I took out of that was what a dick he was. I mean, he must have been really not not so much difficult to work with. But like, I mean, you hear stories about that from Stanley Kubrick, but you don't really hear so much about Billy Friedkin. But there he is. Kind of interesting how the series starts with The Exorcist and ends with Twilight Zone movie. So, like, the oh. series kind of bookends in basically saying, like, a lot of the, the a lot of issues that happened on these sets were from, you know, narcissistic and jerkish directors, you know? Yeah. But, hey, they did a really good job in The Twilight Zone explaining that. It was very much so, like, the directors were auteurs at that time and they were giving, like, everything and, like, could get away with so much on set you know, in the seventies. And I thought that was really good context to have with like setting up a lot of the stuff that goes down. I wasn't ready for them to actually show the shit in the, I mean, they, I'd seen that footage before, but yeah, it's weird. Never. I don't know. They, they seem to have, I mean, they had every angle and of course, you know, there's explosions going off and there's water splashing everywhere. So you don't actually see the moment of impact in that, I mean, for those who don't know, the Twilight Zone, the movie, Vic Morrow and a couple of kids, uh, child actors were killed because a helicopter basically cut them in half. Um, a helicopter that uh, was damaged by an explosion fell on them. And they show that, I mean, if, if you're sensitive to that, it's about 20 minutes in. They show the propellers hit the water. Yeah. Be yeah. aware. They show the moment of impact. And, yeah. you know, like I said, there's smoke from explosions and water from splashing. So, you know, it's not. But that almost makes it more creepy because it's not an effect. You realize that, you know, and then they talk about how they went in the water looking for them and they realized that, you know, they were cut in half. And, you know, and, and this was at like three in the morning. And these were chi- that was the big stink is these child actors weren't supposed to be working past, I think, 8 p.m. They were hired illegally, actually. No permits. Yeah. yeah. And they were um, and th- and th- here they are at three in the morning trying to get this shot that um, and, and they they had interviews with uh, with the effect. I think it was the effects guy who um, he was walking the set and he saw all these charges where he didn't put them. He's all the production designer. Yeah. He's like, no, we, is there anything else on this set I need to know about? Because this is not cool. So, I mean, it, it really makes Landis look bad. Like really well, it bad. Makes Landis and the producers yeah. look bad. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the things that I really, at least with how they like picked what movies and when to show them, you get movies like, you start off with The Exorcist, The Omen, and Poltergeist, where it's like, oh, wow, these movies had a lot of weird coincidences or weird mishappings surrounding it that, you know, and you can make those connections to say it's cursed. And then you get to, like, The Crow, where it's like, there's, you know, the supposed curse of the Lee family and, like, stuff like that. But ultimately, what led to Brandon Lee's death was, uh, you know, production cutting corners. They they were saying that they hi- that they hired a local to do the gun and uh, props and stuff like that. The Crow, I think, is my favorite episode of that Same. because I mean, everybody knows. Oh, he was killed because you know a prop gun. You know, and everyone thinks that it's a piece of paper from the blank that came out no. at such close. But they explain they have an actual firearms expert go through exactly what happened and what it is is they used the same gun for a close-up of loading basically a bullet and then um they fire it but um basically the 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 front of the bullet got lodged in the um in the gun and then they put the blank in that they were going to use and actually point at the dude but in the barrel was the projectile. Oh, they explain it really, really well what happened. So if you don't know exactly what happened, you will after that one. And it is, I mean, it, it's all just a bunch of, um, a bunch of precautions that weren't taken. They should have, a bunch of stuff that should have been checked that wasn't. But even like with that one, it was, and uh, same with uh, Twilight Zone a little bit. It's all these little things that led up to it. Like, 
okay, that was Lodge. You sh- it sh- that shot should have been shot so that the gun wasn't actually pointed at him. It was actually pointed off so that even if there was something, it would have hit the set and not him instead. But, but the camera was the in the ang- way. Yeah. But the camera yeah. didn't but it didn't look good. So then they changed the angle and he was actually pointing at him. And then, you know, there's all these little things. Whereas like so it was like a lot of like little little mishaps that led to it. Whereas Twilight Zone was just blatant, like, oh, we can't have child actors working this late. Fine, we'll hire them ourselves illegally and stuff like that. Oh, wait until you see you ain't seen nothing yet with the explosions. We're gonna have even bigger explosions. And it's mm-hmm. just like and I, I I already knew because they dropped the last four episodes two at a time, and I knew when they as soon as they were like the next ones are the crow and Twilight Zone. I'm like, oh, that's gonna be fucking rough, dude. I I work production and on set. I'm I am I am a part of the production team. I'm uh, the production department, and our number one job is not only making sure everyone has what they need, it's safety and i thought that was really good that they brought in lloyd kaufman who yes. i've worked with a bunch and i've interviewed him before and it's weird how often he comes up in my life but lloyd is <laughs> he's, he said it himself he's a narcissistic asshole uh and you love him or hate him or love him or hate his work i think he was wearing a dress as he, he was, was saying that too he, wasn't like he? they were interviewing him <laughs> on the set of his new movie where he was where he's in a dress and made up. Are you kidding me? Of course Lloyd's going to take an opportunity to advertise his new movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I did love how they were. How it was that contrast where it's like, here's Lloyd. He's been making these like super low budget films. But at the end of the day, safety is number one. No film is worth a life. Um, and it's it, we are still. And I like that that they said that like we're still accidents are going to happen. And. And they still do. I mean, we there was a stunt woman who lost her arm on the set of a uh, Resident Evil movie. Someone died on the set of Deadpool 2. These accidents do happen, but it, it's when it comes at, you know, people being negligent, like the uh, camera assistant who died on the train tracks uh, because the directors shot there without a permit and illegally. That's that's not good. And that really like angers me so much because no film, no television is worth anyone's life. Yeah. Like it's in, like I'm very passionate about movies and and all that. Of course we are. I mean, fuck, dude, we've been talking on this podcast for like three years now. I mean, obviously, everyone knows we love them, but like still it's it's not worth someone's life. And that's where like I'm kind of really liking that we're kind of moving past saying a film is cursed because it really does take away, you know, that possibility. Yeah, exactly. Because at the end of the day, it, but it also throw like they explained it in the poltergeist saying like, oh, the film was cursed because they used real skeletons and the special effects guy is like, no, dude, people have been doing that for decades. Yeah. You putting these young lot like people who lost their lives on me is fucked up. That like, skeleton that Vincent Price danced with back then. <laughs> yeah. Real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So don't put those on him. Instead, when it actually comes to actual stuff like Twilight Zone, where Landis and his producers actually did a bunch of stuff against the rules, against safety, against better precautions. Yeah, dude, those guys should be wearing that on their shoulders. Like, it's fucking terrible. I mean, it's fucking harrowing just even watching that footage. I can't even imagine being there, being the the parents were there of the kids. And, like, it's just, uh, I, I... Hope to never. I I I have been on a set where where someone died on a run. It was just like they got in a car accident trying to get back to set or something. But like never like on on set, you know. But it's still it hurt. It hits hard when you lose someone on set. It's crazy. My thing about cursed films and um and we'll talk about Poltergeist in a second because I think that is the most. The, the the example that people think of when they think of a cursed film but um yeah. my issue with the series is i feel they're all about a half an hour long a little less and i feel like some of them struggled to fill that half hour because you know like you said you know you had the exorcist and the exorcist you had the black magician in the omen um in the twilight zone one you know like you said they had lloyd kaufman in there and then they talked to kane hodder um who didn't work on Twilight Zone, but he talked about how he had a fire stunt go bad, you know, and I understand what they're doing. You know, it's all 
supplying context, but it right. doesn't, you know, the, these people, it, it seemed like filler to me. And even Lloyd Kaufman, until you actually explained to me that what Lloyd Kaufman was doing was saying, hey, safety's number one. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, maybe that went over my head because, you know, I was enraptured with Lloyd Kaufman in a dress. But <laughs> well, and, well, and that's and that's the thing, because if you look at a trove film, having been on those sets and you see them, they cut corners everywhere. <laughs> Except for when it comes to safety. Not when like, somebody might get cut cut in half by a helicopter. Just even that little moment where they yell cut and then Lloyd goes, don't run. Don't fucking run on my set. Like, that's awesome, dude. Like, it, it's, it's, gr- I love seeing that uh, on sets. So that, that really, I mean, don't get me wrong. And yeah, Kane Hodder, I get the context, but that was also a lot to take on. Cause like, I remember as soon as they, Kane started talking about it. I had to pause because I'm like, no, we're already talking about the Twilight Zone, which already has me very worked up. Now we're going to talk about what happened to Kane Hodder. I'm going to be super worked up. And then they cut to Lloyd in a dress, which kind of alleviates a lot of that. The Kane Hodder story, um, he tells it better into Hell and Back, his documentary. Um, oh, dude. That one, Fuck that yeah. one will have you in tears. Yeah, dude, I was bawling my eyes out through half that movie, especially when he was talking about what he went through after the incident and, like, recovery. Oh. I still got to see that one. Oh, my God. Highly recommend to hell and back. That's great. Yeah. But um, as far as Poltergeist goes, now, people all, always say just because, you know, and I, I say just because, not to lessen it, um, but... Because Heather O'Rourke and Dominique Dunn both died after production, pe- that's the one people say, oh, it was a curse. It's like, well, no, it just, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's a coincidence. I mean, Dominique Dunn was murdered. Heather O'Rourke was um, it, actually misdiagnosed. It come, yeah, well, that's the thing. It comes out. I didn't realize she was misdiagnosed um, until the cursed film show where they, they talk about, you know, no, they've been treating her for the wrong thing. And that's probably what killed her. And uh, was it Gary Sherman? Um, talk about how he was a pallbearer at her at her funeral. Yeah, the director. Yeah, yeah, that was that was so that was so intensely sad. But the thing is, what what they did right with it, it they didn't they didn't lean into how oh this production was cursed. They they kind of debunked it by saying oh yeah, well those skeletons might have been real, but that's nothing new. And then I, I think it was a good tribute to both Heather O'Rourke and Dominic Dunn more than it was a look what this movie did to them. You know, there were, there were no fingers pointed in the poltergeist one. And that's what, cause there was little glimpses of it throughout the series of the series debunking things. And I really wish they had done a, a better job of it, especially in those early episodes, instead of <laughs> filling so much time with the jackholes, especially the fuck. Like, I, I know I'm very angry with uh, the the people from the Conjuring movies, the real life guys, but like real life exorcist really fucking pissed me off. The Omen one was funny because um, I feel like they were debunking it when they brought all the jackholes on, but they weren't clear about debunking it. They were just, they were basically letting them talk and um, they didn't, put it into context so which i think they did in especially in the poltergeist one and the crow one you know that wasn't a curse that was just i mean i i'm just impressed with how well they explained what happened step by step that's what blew me away about the crow and i just wish they did it like a like a like a better job of saying like all right we're going to talk about the omen for a little bit but this episode is all about coincidence about how when it comes to curses it's purely coincidence you can say that it's black magic you can say it's you know the devil influence and the thing but and i did like how with the omen thing and with the exorcist at some point at some points people were like well why wouldn't the devil want to be why would the devil like want to curse movies about him like wouldn't he want to curse like you know christian faith movies like (laughs) wouldn't that make more sense like movies that would turn people to god more as opposed to this but the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing people he doesn't exist he doesn't want that but that's ridiculous because you're showing his secrets by making movies about him and then they're like oh satanists were mad because this movie is showing saying it's like well first of all anton levey was a creative consultant on a bunch of movies well anton levey was a publicity whore though i mean he oh yeah he he he, he never shied away from a camera (laughs) so i mean if yeah if if the devil wanted to convince people he didn't exist he wouldn't have sent anton levey to do his talking (laughs) yeah it's weird with that type of stuff um but yeah no that's the thing though i do i do like the series because in a lot of ways it kind of pulls back the curtain on 
the idea of these movies being cursed when you know like the you know it's uh occam's razor you know the simplest explanation is usually the true one you know it's like some just uh bad coincidence uh like cutting corners on safety uh, just all sorts of things that you know just you know regardless of subject matter you know it's just it just the uh true cause is pretty mundane uh, and that's the other thing too you know like accidents and uh, tragedy have struck uh all sorts of movie and tv sets regardless of genre or subject matter so it's just it, it just seems to be like uh kind of twofold you know what with, with horror movies it's easier to kind of draw that uh connection like oh it's cursed and also like a lot of times it's a marketing ploy like like you were saying with like the exorcist uh that you know if somebody thinks uh something is dangerous you know like a movie that could be dangerous then they'll seek it out like antrim <laughs> yeah like like antrim here i am risking my life watching antrim just and one of the things that i really liked about the crow is they uh, talked with Michael Berryman, who was famous for uh, the original Hills Have Eyes movies and uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Devil's Rejects, Weird Science. He's in like so many movies, uh, but he was supposed to be in The Crow, but his he ended up getting cut because they couldn't do any more scenes uh, with Brandon Lee after the incident. And I'm so glad they did because he is a man who... Um, has always played a scary role, you know, because of his physical features. But he is such, and I've met him at conventions, he's such a kind and soft-spoken and just so smart. Yeah, he's super articulate. He brought so much great context because, especially when you're talking about, like, the kids, they were right after each other, uh, Poltergeist and The Crow, where, uh, you know, actors died before filming was complete or they had to do more footage. There was two different approaches to coming back to set with poltergeist no one wanted to come back no one wanted to finish that movie they felt like that film should not have been released whereas uh the creators and make makers of the crow understood this is something that brandon lee really believed in he really loved the project his fiance and mother both said that he was very proud of his work in it and wants that film to be finished and michael berryman just really uh he, he he put he said it so well in saying that the material came from a place of love and heart and so did Brandon's performance and that's how everyone came back they were like no we're going to finish this movie and we're going to make a good movie for Brandon and i really loved that and also just any chance to listen to Michael Berryman that man again can't stress how kind he is especially with how often he is put in in the role of like you know dangerous and evil folk that like i actually w uh, saw him at a uh, cine family a few years ago when they were doing a memorial screening for uh west craven shortly after he passed away and yeah michael Behrman was there and he and he gave an incredible kind of uh eulogy of sorts uh for for Wes or you know just kind of talking about working with Wes and his, and his career and working on the Hills Have Eyes and all that and yeah no just he has such a fascinating perspective uh, on, on all that all right well we've um we've we're running long but uh our actual topic of cursed films I think we pretty much covered it talking about cursed films but let's do a lightning round of movies that weren't in Shudder's cursed films that uh, that might have been cursed. Jacob's got one. Well, the first that comes to mind to me is James Cameron's The Abyss. Now, that movie seemed like it was cursed because, like, Ed Harris nearly drowned and, like, uh, there were physical fights between Cameron people and, like, somebody spiked uh, the fruit punch or, or like, juice <laughs> with PCP and, uh, James, and, like, James Cameron was at a point where he said, like, he had an evil split personality or something named Jim. Like it was James Cameron was the good one, Jim was the bad <laughs> bad one, or or you know he's saying like that's kind of how he felt he was on set. So yeah, no man, that just I've read the stories and it just sounds like that that film set was a nightmare. Oh, I got one. Okay, the original Doctor Doolittle. Huh, Let yeah. me tell you, if you have a solid hour or so, look up what happened behind the scenes of the original Doctor Doolittle. It went from everything from. The main actor being a drunken racist to uh, to the point where, like, the kid actor started bullying him. Um, there's, like, 
all these issues of like the animals just like shitting everywhere and like uh, stuff like that. But the single greatest thing I read about it is remember at the end of Doctor Doolittle how they have the giant snail and that's how they leave and like they're they were like floating off in this in the shell of this giant snail. Well, apparently the island that they shot at they re- they had not too long beforehand got ravaged by this like disease or something that was brought on that killed a lot of children um from snails so then here's this production building this giant fucking snail (laughs) on on their island and so all the islanders were like throwing rocks at the snail and like throwing rocks at the production and all this stuff it just seemed like there was so much with it and then also there's the interesting story about how it's a terrible fucking movie it's so bad (laughs) i hate that movie and but like Fox spent so much money because they were trying to like get themselves out of out of in a, a shitty area and stuff. And they're like, no, 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 this is definitely the next Sound of Music. Also terrible. Fuck that movie. <laughs> but uh, uh, so they were like pushing hard that and like that's why it was nominated for so many Academy Awards, but won none of them is just because of all the schmoozing they did. But yeah. I think that film is cursed. Well, I think uh, people when people think of cursed movies, they they think of The Wizard of Oz almost first because, you know, you had people catching on fire and allergic to makeup, and you know, and then you had that monk, Munchkin who hung himself in that one scene on camera. Not really. That one is it was an legend. ostrich. <laughs> that was a, was a flamingo or something. <laughs> um, but that's yeah. the one that people think. And then of course people die after it you know i guess similar to poltergeist but people are like oh see it is cursed cycle no it's just the people are getting old who were in yeah. wizard of Oz. everybody dies but um that's that's one that I, a lot of people think oh the production was cursed it's like no they just didn't you know they were using cheap makeup they didn't vet the you know the 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 fire stunts you know it's it's a lot of the stuff that we're talking about it's just corners are cut and if enough of that happens on the same production people start thinking it's cursed but also when it comes to the reason why you hear it more with horror films is because that's good pr yeah oh who, yeah yep who doesn't want to see the movie when you hear it all the time some lady fainted watching this movie a man had a heart attack oh you're gonna need this puke bag you know it's 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 hype you know people want to be scared so if someone goes this film is cursed and if you watch it the devil is gonna appear in your bed and poke you on the nose five times <laughs> you know people are gonna be like oh fuck the movie they didn't want you to see who's they yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well Depends on the movie. I mean, <laughs> like everyone loves a, a bit of controversy. Uh, how many films, how many terrible films are like, do people watch purely because it was a controversial movie? I mean, oh. like there's been so many where it's like this film has been banned for 20 years and it's like now available for the first time. It's like, fuck, I got to watch it. And then you watch it and you're like, speaking of the, the passion of the Christ, which I don't think is all that great of a movie, but um, there were uh, two people struck by lightning on the set. And everyone is like, oh, that, that's God telling you not to make this. Well, no, that just means they were probably shooting near an electrical storm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, the devil didn't want you to see Passion of the Christ, which was, let's be honest, it was torture porn. And, it pretty uh, much mm-hmm. it pretty much was, well, you know, well, yeah, well, but, well, you know, a little anti-Semitic. You know, that's, but, well, you know, that's yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's Mel, Gibson. Mel Gibson's thing. Yeah. You, you got your Mel Gibson. But. I, what else we got before we wrap up? Well, I, I was just going to ask, would you guys recommend this series to others? Like, do you think this is well worth, I mean, cause like I've, I know I've done a lot of pitching about a lot of like the beginning and stuff, but would you guys recommend someone watch like the whole series? I absolutely would because like I, like I said before, these are short little half hour, actually less. They're like 28 minutes each. And a lot of them are filler. But just, you know, I mean, yeah, I would I would recommend to watch all of them because I think they've all got merit. If you're only going to watch one, watch The Crow. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you're if The Crow, I, I, those final three, I would recommend if you're only going to watch one, any of them. The Twilight Zone one is very triggering. It's tough. Uh, yeah. It's very tough to to get through. Uh, we had to pause a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, there, I, yeah, I'd, I'd either even with its faults, like I, it's it's really good. It sparks a lot of debate. Uh, again, I just wish they didn't give so much time to the real life exorcist. That really, ugh. and I hope <laughs> that guy didn't curse a set that you're going to be on. 
<laughs> well, they're not happening right now, so I think yeah. I'm pretty good. Maybe that's uh, the curse. God, they shouldn't have had that guy do it. It cursed. Damn it! He cursed. That's every why I've set. been out of work for over a month now. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Jacob? Would you recommend the whole series? Um, yeah, no. I mean, like, especially if you're interested in kind of that production history, and like I said, you know, it was uh, just kind of interesting that um, it kind of. Uh, undid you know kind of this uh, the idea of the curse and it kind of focused on the more mundane and grounded reasons for the tragedies uh, related to the movies so yeah i mean if you're if uh, that's something you want to check out or, or like the kind of subject matter then yeah yeah i mean they're they're good behind the scenes specials it's just yeah they're behind the scenes of movies that had troubled productions that people are saying are cursed so and i did really like how at the very end of the twilight zone one because it's the last episode they do bring up the fact that you know we're seeing less films being called cursed because there's no word of mouth everything's out there with social media and everything and that it's no longer well did you hear what happened on this it's like no this is what happened on this set you know this is a direct thing we actually got word from like a pa or something that this happened there you know they're starting to actually mourn the people who are being killed on set rather than exploit them. Like I remember there, there was a, was, I don't know if it was a stunt man or a driver who was killed on the set of the dark Knight rises. Oh, right. Um, you know, and I remember when that happened, you're like, you know, they weren't saying, see the movie that killed a stunt man. I mean, they, you know, they, I think they're yeah. better than that now. You know? Yeah. Luckily there hasn't, I haven't seen movies that have like used a death on their set, like explicitly like that. See the movie that killed X amount of, you know, they're not advertising Milo and Otis going, see the movie that killed this, you know, this many kittens. But they kind of did that for Br with Brandon Lee and the crow. I remember when it came out, everyone's like, and they made a big deal. They're like, oh, the scene where he actually dies is not in the movie. They wanted to make that clear, but it was a big, you know, this is the movie yeah. that he died making. And I think it was kind of a draw for people, you know? I mean, there was a lot of that with the Dark Knight as well, remember? Oh, uh, yeah. There was a lot of word of mouth of people being like, you got to see it. Like, Heath Ledger's portrayal is so fucked up. It led him to suicide. Like, that was a really fucked up and dark thing that people were, like, pushing and stuff. I, I mean, granted, they weren't doing that with the advertisement for the movie, but that I remember that being, like, a big push from moviegoers yeah. and audience members. All right. Well, let's get out of here. This has been yeah. uh, this has been us talking about cursed films. <laughs> uh, now streaming on Shutter. Yeah, now stre yeah, check it out on Shutter. I mean, I would recommend you check it out. It's cool. Yeah, and uh, let us know. I we didn't really get full into the discussion, but uh, let us know what your favorite cursed movies are and what movies if you think are cursed. I mean, I know The Conqueror gave everybody cancer. Uh, you know, Fitzcarraldo made everybody fist fight. You know, on set. So let's uh, let let's hear it. Uh, our theme music is Restless Spirit. So go give them some love because, you know, that's a band that's always on the road and they are not now. Uh, our artwork is Chris Fisher. And uh, where can we find you guys on the Twitters? Jacob. Uh, you can find me at Jacob Davison underscore. That is at J-A-C-O-B-D-A-V-I-S-O-N underscore. And Korea. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Korean Barbecue. That's C-O-R-R-E-I-A. -R -R -E and BBQ, and also on Stardust, which uh, I sporadically post on there, but, you know, it's quick little bits, so if you want to hear me, you know, for like 30 seconds at a time, there you go. That's all Stardust is. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Cinema Ferite. That's like Verite, but with fear, so it's F-E-A-R-I-T-E. -E. Uh, you can find all three of us on our Twitter, which is at Ion Horror. Yeah, we got, we on Twitter now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can also find all of us at the Ion Horror Facebook page or the iHorror Facebook page. Um, we're not hard to get at, so if you want to at us, you can at us at any of those places. And we do respond. Oh, yeah. We don't have a whole lot going on right now. <laughs> True. <laughs> all right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, stay safe, stay quarantine please don't go and protest that you want things to open up before they are ready because that's we're starting to flatten the curve now and you're gonna spike it again so stay safe stay clean wash your hands and we'll see you in a couple weeks so for me james j edwards i'm jacob davison and i'm jonathan korea keep your eye on horror <laughs>